Top Med Talk. Well, hello, I'm Desiree Chapel with Top Med Talk. We're at Anesthesiology 2022 here in New Orleans, Louisiana. On Saturday, we were able to talk to Dr. Elizabeth Drum about the, the ASA, the American Society of Anesthesiology Global Humanitarian Global Outreach Committee. During that time, we learned about the Global Scholar Program that is sponsored by the American Society of Anesthesiologists and funded by Edwards Life Sciences. This program helps to promote the work of international anesthesiologists from all over the world, bring them to Anesthesiology 2022, the meeting this year, so they can experience what's happening here in the U.S. and abroad, network, make connections, and hopefully take what they've learned here back to their countries and help support the anesthesiology endeavors there. It is with great pleasure that we get to meet our next set of guests here. We just did an interview with another group, so if you missed that, please be sure to check it out at topmedtalk.com. Now, we're going to go through the list, have everyone introduce themselves, and get more into conversation. So, Dr. Amal, can you just take a moment and tell everyone your name uh, and your background, where you're from? Okay. Uh, so, slight disclaimer. I'm, I'm not a doctor. I'm you're a do- non-clinician. Okay. Uh, but my name is Amal Panaskar, and I work as head of programs uh, at the World Federation of Societies of Anesthesiologists, or WFSA. That's right. Yes. I'm so sorry. I, I did uh, say that. Um, we, we wanted to have you uh, sit down with us because the Global Scholar Program is just one of several that are out there to support these endeavors. Tell us about why it's so important um, that we s- support international uh, educational efforts for anesthesiologists. Okay, so uh, I think there's a couple of things. Uh, scholarships and, and, and similar opportunities, they, they have a twofold impact. The first is direct education. Um, the scholars came here, they attend sessions, they learn things, they take them back. But I think the larger impact, the more important one, is developing leaders and teachers. All of the scholars that I know go back to their countries and teach one, two, five, ten over their career, hundreds of residents. We've had, we had some of the scholars here who are the first pediatric anesthesiologists in their countries the first uh, people to do short training courses for other people. So these programs, I think that's where the key impact is, creating teachers and educators and leaders uh, and connecting them at events like this or similar for us. Yeah, networking for sure, uh, fostering collaborative efforts uh, in their countries and beyond their their borders for sure. Well, let's get right into it. Um, Dr. Rediak, can you tell us your name and where you're from? Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Radit Schmelzwerk, and I I am an anesthesiologist from Ethiopia. I was a past uh, global scholar in 2016, and now I had another opportunity to come here, uh, do an observatorship at Seattle Children's, due to um, mainly support from Seattle Children's Hospital as well, and the ACHO committee here. So it has been an honor to be here, and I am very happy to be here. Yeah, absolutely. I'll come back to, to you, and we'll talk a little bit about what it's like you know, what you took from the first time you went through and then to where you are now. And then we also have um, Dr. Tuhut. Tell us your name and where you're from. Okay, my name is uh, Dr. Tuhut Tashwamalamu, and I'm from Ethiopia, and I'm currently practicing in Cure uh, Pediatric Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. So I did my fellowship in Kenya Mm -hmm. on 2021, so it has been a year since I completed my fellowship. And... uh, Yeah, and I'm the first pediatric anesthesiologist in the country. All right, and just for context, in Ethiopia, there are 110 million? Yes, exactly. So in Ethiopia, we have around more than 110 million population, in which more than 50% of the population is pediatrics are uh, under 18 years of age. 50% of the population is under the age of 18. Yes. Wow, that's incredible. And you're the first pediatric anesthesiologist. Yes, yes. Wow, that is special. Congratulations to you. Thank you. That's great. We'll come back and talk to you in just a little bit. All right. And then Dr. Anthony. Uh, Thank you. Uh, My name is Dr. Anthony Raya. Uh, I'm an anesthesiologist uh, working uh, in Kenya. I work for the Kenyan military. I'm currently doing a fellowship in pediatric anesthesia. And because of that, I was chosen as a global scholar and got the opportunity to visit uh, South Carolina at the Medical University of South Carolina, where I had a an observership program, mm-hmm. and then come here to the to the anesthesiology 2022. 
it's been a great honor and pleasure to be part of the Global Scholarship Program. That's fantastic. Well, congratulations Thank to you, you for your fellowship. Well, um, Redia, tell us about your experience when you went through, you know, was it two years, three years ago? It was in 2016. Oh, in 2016. That's right. I'm yeah. sorry. Um, tell us about your experience then and, you know, what it meant to you to go through, uh, through then coming back to your country. Yeah, so the AC Global Scholarship Program has given me the opportunity to come and see what uh, I would not even dream of seeing in my clinical practice, even in the near future. I'm not sure even I would be able to see those things in uh, in 20 or 30 years. So that and the observership part also and um, exhibit, you know, the innovation part of anesthesia that I was able to witness it myself. And then when I came, when I got back, uh, you know, the first thing I did was prepare a presentation for my residents back home because I wanted them to be as motivated as I was going back to my country, Ethiopia. So during the, uh, through that process of presentation, through that presentation, I um, showed them that it was an opportunity to uh, witness the things that they would not otherwise witness in the near future. And also it was an opportunity to be motivated. It was an opportunity to see innovation and it was an opportunity to network with key individuals in the field of anesthesia so they would be able to network more and even form um, a platform for formal collaboration between institutions. Mm -hmm. So wherever the observership was for me back then and uh, even currently now there is always a room for collaboration between institution to institution and there are several ways that those institutions and the key individuals that I that uh, I was able to meet in different ne networking events as well as within the conference itself has helped me to form um, friendships and yeah. uh, also a formal collaboration where uh, institutions can be helped yes. and uh, for example the anesthesia residency program can be helped or possibly for example um, support of subspecialty programs in the, in the country so I think it was uh, quite a bit of experience in 2016 so that's, that was the first thing that I did when I went back I wanted them to experience the things I, uh, I experienced here. Yeah since then what has changed for you and really, what are you hoping to get from this experience um, with the repetition of the program? So I'm, ha I'm really hoping that uh, some of the friends that I had made back then and some of the collabs that I, uh, I have encountered to get more engaged in our professional society work as well as in, uh, in different teaching institutions. So I do believe education is the future and engaging them in those educational activities, res helping residency programs and so on. Uh, those are the key things that I would take away from this, a formal collaboration process. That's wonderful. Yeah. In your country, just for context for our listeners today, what's it like um, to be an anesthesiologist, and how many anesthesiologists are there um, that you work with? And maybe, maybe just contextualize it in your residency program, per, per se, uh, um, to say. For also, Ethiopia is a country with more than 110 million population, like uh, mm -hmm. mentioned earlier. But uh, we had in 2016, we had only uh, 23 anesthesiologists. So after that, now we have about 150 we think it's an improvement yes but still there is a long way to come compared yeah. to you know what's out there compared to what i see here in the u.s i think there's a whole lot of room for improvement i think there's a lot of opportunities for uh collaboration and improvement in the field of anesthesia mm -hmm. and i think the acj the asa uh, charitable foundation has given this opportunity for people like myself and other, you know, possible leaders in the field of anesthesia to come and see and observe. I was the only one back then in 2016. Mm -hmm. Now I, I can see five scholars were selected and given the opportunity to come and see the things that they are able to see and take away and become leaders back home. 
Yeah. Well, yeah. that's incredible. Thank you so much for your work uh, yeah. in this space, and good luck whenever you go home. Yeah, yeah I just would like to thank uh, the yeah. AAC for uh, whatever they have done. I do believe this process is an act of kindness, and one of my best friends just um, said yesterday that the world could use uh, more kind people. And yeah, and, uh, and another friend of mine also <laughs> said that... Um, uh, you know this term that she uses whenever I say thank you she said pay it forward yeah yeah so like that so that's sense. what I would say to anybody who says thank you to me and I also say I am grateful for things that I have here and been done to me for me but uh, I would say I would want to uh, yeah, pay it forward yeah wow. beautiful words thank, thank you me. very much for yet um Anthony tell us about uh what it's like to do anesthesia in Kenya you know Many people that I've worked with in the past have been um, done medical missions to Kenya specifically. Uh, and so I know that there is ways to raise awareness of um, anesthesia within your, your community and your country. But from your perspective, what is it like? Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, in Kenya, we, uh, the University of Nairobi started a fellowship in pediatric anesthesia. Mm -hmm. uh, it started in 2013. Uh, it's a WFSA-sponsored uh, program. Uh, and this program has been uh, very instrumental in uh, in training anesthesiologists from around the around the uh, the, the continent, mm -hmm. uh, continent of Africa. I think it's, it's a very important program because mm -hmm. it has benefited not just the people of of, of Kenya but also our neighbors, uh, especially mm -hmm. countries who do not Ethiopia. have the capacity. <laughs> like, like Ethiopia, Tihut uh, is, is 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 my senior colleague. Yeah, and currently also have uh, two other Ethiopian uh, uh, classmates of mine. So I think it's a very important uh, and very beneficial program uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for for the region. Uh, and I know there are plans to put up other 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 centers in Africa. And I think the people who qualify from these uh, programs do a lot of impact, uh, both in providing safer uh, anesthesia to the pediatric population. Mm -hmm and also in impacting uh, to the other colleagues uh, from whatever, wherever they are coming from, uh, both in terms of education, in terms of leadership, and even mentorship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the program is uh, quite beneficial, and, uh, and we hope it can sustain so that it can give safer anesthesia to the people from that region. Yeah, absolutely. Your time here in the U.S. and at the meeting, uh, have you been able to attend any of the pediatric lectures or I know it's been very busy and difficult to get to, to much but yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll say that uh, yes uh, we had uh, the opportunity to come to the SPA conference uh, the mm -hmm. day before the ASA started uh, the Society for Pediatric Anesthesia yes, Society for Pediatric Anesthesia yeah. so we attended that conference and even during this meeting there are quite a lot of talks uh, for the pediatric uh, uh, pediatric uh, that will beneficial to pediatric anesthesiologists and yes, I've tried as much as possible. We have a very good, uh, a very good book that guides you on where you can go. Yes. Uh, even though, uh, unfortunately, there are some conflicting <laughs> talks that happen. It's busy. <laughs> There's uh, a lot but, of great but information. But it's good to learn that also these talks uh, are available, so you can uh, yes. visit the talks yeah. later and 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 sit down and and even use those tools to teach uh, people back home. Yeah. So that's very beneficial. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with us to chat. And to who, just tell us um, about what the Global Scholar Program means to you. Okay. So it was, you know, uh, I would like to add something on what Radhi said, because at that moment when she gave the presentation on 2016, we were so passionate and, we, you know, we were taught, when are we going to go there? And so, you know, <laughs> the anesthesiology society and uh, we thought anesthesiology was, you know, it's a big field. Mm -hmm. where you can change a lot of things because at that moment we are few and anesthesiologists are few, you know. So it was a big encouragement for us and uh, we believe that education is going to change a lot in our country. So when I did my fellowship, uh, you know, it, since I was the first person, I need to, you know, encourage myself. So behind mm -hmm. me, there are a lot of people who were encouraging me. I would like to thank my husband because he has to, yeah <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> because he has to take care of my two kids when I go to my fellowship so it's not something yes. easy to do this so yeah. I was so happy I, I would like to thank him so so it's uh, you know one person should start that fellowship and uh, always hard working being uh, 
perseverance, everything will change, you know, it's a matter of time. So changes will come through time. So uh, my fellowship was not easy because I have to return back because of COVID and I came yes. back again to oh, finish. Goodness. So it was not easy that moment. It was a difficult time. So this, I was supposed to be a global scholar at that moment, but okay. because of COVID, you know, I, I couldn't make it. So this time, I, you know, it encouraged me, anesthesia is a big field, you know. There are a lot to do, a lot to change. And uh, back home, there are residents where I have to go back and teach them, tell, tell them, you know, there are a lot of things to work in terms of leadership, in terms of quality of care, you know, in terms of uh, bright future for anesthesia society. So uh, I have seen a lot of things. I mean, you know, in, uh, I did my fellowship in Texas Children's Hospital. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it's the biggest hospital. Yeah. So, yeah, it is a lot of things in terms of organized way of working things, uh -huh. uh, in, in terms of open communication, clear communication, the quality of care they were giving, you know, it might take maybe, as Dr. Radi says, it might take 20 years, 30 years, but we are heading towards that, you know, it's just a matter of time, yeah. a matter of uh, being hard working, you know, a matter of being compassionate. So in the future, uh, so this, th this place, uh, being a global scholar, this me, you know, we have a bright future in terms of caring for a pediatric patients back home where there are more than 50% of the population is pediatrics. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to uh, increase awareness in terms of, you know, for surgeons, for our population as a whole, kids are not, children are not big adults, you know. Yes. They need special treatment, they need special care. Even uh, one of my big plans, which is in my mind, is having one pediatric hospital in my country mm -hmm. for the future so that, you know, we will give quality of care that is in my mind so yeah. <laughs> yeah that's my future plan and in terms of training you know from what I've seen in here in terms of training we need to train we need to have a lot of pediatric anesthesiologists back home which yeah. could be distributors throughout the country because we have the largest population almost the second largest population in Africa so yeah. we need to increase the uh, training all over the country so that's one of our plans. In the near future, we have a plan to open pediatric anesthesia fellowship. Oh, wow, that's wonderful. Yeah, so in order to increase the training and also in order to collaborate with uh, American Society of Anesthesia, with Society of Pediatric Anesthesiology, mm -hmm. and all of those who are behind us and uh, hardworking and compassionate people here. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we have a bright future about Kamsa. Yeah, that's wonderful. I just wanted to thank you guys for taking the time and sitting down with us and everything that you're doing to move the profession of anesthesiology in your own country and, and internationally, globally. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your work in that. And um, Amal, I think WF, WFSA as well as the ASA are doing amazing things by supporting these, these uh, anesthesiologists. I mean, uh, all of the programs are, are driven by, by these yeah. guys that you see here. We're, we're a volunteer-driven, volunteer-led uh -huh. organization. Uh, and Anthony mentioned something uh, about um, his, his time doing his fellowship. Uh, the fellows learn a lot from these training programs and take that back. But equally, the institution hosting the fellows learns an, an incredible amount. So, so there's this bilateral relationship and it, it comes back to our mission as an organization is to unite and empower anesthesiologists for better care. So yeah. uh, it's, it's just it's incredibly nice to be um, here. Yeah, the same. Place. it is. It, what an honor for us, you know, to, to be able to talk to you guys. So um, thank you again. You know what you said, pay it forward. That's really what we're all here to do. We're all paying it forward, aren't we? Well, if you want to pay it forward, you can find more information at ASAHQ.org. Thank you so much for listening to Top Men Talk and hearing from these amazing anesthesiologists. Um, if you want to find out more, um, hear the previous conversation with, with our previous group of, of international anesthesiologists, you can find that at topmedtalk.com. And if you like what you heard, please share on social media uh, as well. So thanks so much for listening. Cheers. Top Med Talk. Thanks for downloading Top Med Talk. Don't forget to subscribe via your podcatcher. Don't forget to check us out on social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And also, don't forget, Top Med Talk is the broadcasting arm of EdPom, evidence-based perioptive 
medicine. We'd love you to find out more about that. If you check out ebpom.org, you can find low prices on some of the conferences we're organizing around the world. Many of them are virtual and don't even involve you leaving your own home. Check out ebpom.org now.